Hello friends, this video on Thermodynamics Part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 21. There are some limitations of the first law of thermodynamics. We have learned the first law of thermodynamics which talks about the total conservation of the energy that is changing in internal energy is nothing but heat supplied plus work done. And then we also have this new term called enthalpy. We can talk about the uh, energy change constant pressure, the normal scenario which we have in day to day life. But there are some limitations of the first law. The first is it is unable to predict the feasibility of a particular reaction. If, if I have a reaction, let's suppose C plus O2 is equal to CO2, it can't tell whether this reaction will happen or not. It can't predict that feasibility. So, what to do that? For that, We have a new term which will introduce in the next few slides, but before that, let's understand the spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. So, what is the spontaneous process? As I told, uh, the first law is unable to predict whether the process is spontaneous, whether it can happen on its own or not. So, spontaneous process is something which takes place only in one direction and has potential to take place in one direction only without any assistance. Once the proper conditions. So, for example, and also the spontaneous process is irreversible. And if you want to reverse it, you have to apply some external agency. For example, if you see the falling of water from the height, you put the water here, it will fall on its own. It's irreversible. But if you want to take the water from here to here, you have to apply some energy, maybe some motor or some pumping system that will take care. But by default, it will fall down. Right? That is a spontaneous process. Same thing, hot water cools on your own. If you have a hot cup of coffee, it will cool now and so on. That is a spontaneous process. Burning of wood is a spontaneous process. You just put some fire and burn. Evaporation of water in the room temperature. Room temperature also gives water, it will, it will evaporate. Right? These are all spontaneous processes because it takes place on its own in a specific direction. And please note, please a critical note here, the spontaneous process does not mean it will occur immediately or it will be occur very fast. For example, this evaporation of water will not occur immediately, it will take time. And if you have a big reservoir of water, it will take more time to evaporate, right? So it may not occur immediately, it may not be fast also, fast and, and immediate is not the criteria for spontaneous process. The only criteria for spontaneous process, it will occur on its own. It will occur on its own without any assistance. You keep the water and it will occur. And these all things happen in the uh, standard temperature that is I think 25 degrees Celsius is the temperature they take. This evaporation of water happens there. Right? So anything that once the condition is met, it will occur without any extra energy input. Extra energy, I mean to say, extra electrical energy, extra mechanical energy, extra heat energy, those things are not required. Once the things are set, it will occur on its own. Because, for example, in this, the cooling of this, you don't need to pump in extra heat. Right? Here, you don't need to pump in anything, it falls on its own. To burn, you don't need to provide extra thing for that, it will just burn. It will keep burning, right? So there is no extra energy required. There is no extra. So I'm saying the extra assistance. I'm talking about the extra energy. Obviously, for example, in this case, if you cut off the oxygen supply, it will stop, right? If you uh, cool down temperature, it will stop. But but I'm talking about no extra energy is required, right? Once the condition is set, for example, in this case, it needs oxygen to burn. You give oxygen, leave it off. It will keep burning. Keep burning. Same thing here, it needs nothing, you just have room temperature, you just keep it off, it will keep evaporating. So, spontaneous process is the process which takes this one direction without any assistance. It should not be fast, it need not be fast, it did not occur immediately. It may happen that you keep this and it, uh, the process starts after a year or so, but that is also a spontaneous process. Correct? Non spontaneous process is uh, process which is not spontaneous, is non spontaneous. They don't have a natural tendency to occur. They, they don't occur naturally. The spontaneous process is generally a natural occurring uh, process. And they do not occur at all naturally. 
Let me repeat this once again. They do not occur out. That example was the electrolysis of water. So if you stop giving electrical energy, that's the extra energy, it will stop. The moment you again uh, plug in, you start giving uh, electrical energy, the electrolysis will start. The moment you stop giving ele uh, the electrical energy, this will stop. So this is my example of non-spontaneous process where uh, you need extra energy, extra energy. So if you stop the extra energy, the, the process will stop. Now you must be having a lot of doubts in your mind that what is the driving force? Why we saw that some force like burning of wood, evaporation were spontaneous while the electrolysis of water was not spontaneous. What is the driving force? What determines the direction of spontaneity? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.